There are hidden gems in neighborhood after neighborhood around Los Angeles. The streets and the buildings that make up Los Angeles all have stories to tell. There is history here that is important and that needs to be preserved. Survey LA is the first ever comprehensive Los Angeles Historic Resources Survey. It's our first opportunity to go throughout Los Angeles and identify those sites of architectural, cultural, and historic significance. It's a planning tool. It's, it will give decision makers, policy makers, community members, and property owners alike the first ever comprehensive look at our built heritage in Los Angeles, identifying what's significant and what appears to be less significant. Imagine the magnitude of surveying the city of Los Angeles. It's 880,000 parcels. That's a big task. The depth and the range of the survey it's, will be the most comprehensive survey ever undertaken, uh, at least in modern times, by an American city. Survey LA will be fanning out throughout communities in Los Angeles sequentially over the next several years, and we hope to complete the project by the end of 2011. Survey LA simply would not be possible without the partnership of the Getty. It was the, uh, the Getty Conservation Institute that over the last several years really laid the groundwork for this project. The staff of the Getty Conservation Institute are intimately involved with colleagues at the city who are leading this project in the Department of Historic Resources, but as well a major grant, matching grant, was made from the Getty to the city to support the project for five years. Los Angeles doesn't have a systematic inventory of its resources, so we thought, well, that might be a way we can contribute to Los Angeles and to give something back to the community. Right now, less than 15% of the city has been surveyed, and so we just don't know where all the historic buildings are. We don't know the stories, we don't know the buildings, we don't know, you know the architects that, that make our city what it really is and what is so special about it. Here at Frank Lloyd Wright's masterful Ennis House, which he completed in 1924, and it's a great way to understand LA's rich architectural legacy. So imagine Wright, he just came from Tokyo where he had been working. He was shunned in the East for some personal choices and uh, couldn't go back to proper East Coast society. So where did he go? He goes to Los Angeles. And he designs uh, a series of three critical houses, including the Ennis House here, that will really take his architecture to the next level. As a professional and as a historic preservationist who gets to wake up every day and help people save historic places, um, I hope that we get a, a much deeper appreciation and respect for the past uh, and for the richness of Los Angeles' past. Balboa Highlands was uh, developed in 1963 and 1964 uh, by the developer Joseph Eichler. The architects were A. Quincy Jones and Frederick Emmons, who were prominent architects in the modernist movement. And 1963-64 was not all that long ago, and many people don't think of homes from the 1960s or neighborhoods from the 1960s as being significant or potentially historic. Survey LA is going to be evaluating these uh, neighborhoods from the 40s, 50s, and 60s because it now has been about a half century since most of these were built and it's time to identify um, what is uh, significant and worth saving and what is less so. Central Avenue, um, for African Americans this would be the first place that you would actually come a place where you could actually meet anyone um, that you were looking for was Central Avenue. It was really a home place where if you were brought to Los Angeles because of the lure of jobs and sunshine and kind of a relaxed racial atmosphere, you knew that Central Avenue had people that looked like you, um, folks that were actually buying homes that had the highest home ownership rates in the country where 36% of the population actually owned homes in Los Angeles, and so this represented economic freedom, racial freedom, a kind of life where you could have 
Um, work in the daytime and entertainment at night where you had everyone from Billie Holiday to Ella Fitzgerald to any major star that you could bump into on Central Avenue and it became the playground of Los Angeles because of all the entertainment and so really became this kind of um, world center when you really think about it for Hollywood and entertainment at night much the same way that Harlem functioned um, during the same time period. The Far East Cafe has been here since 1923 and they've been operating as a Chinese restaurant since the early 30s. It's the kind of restaurant where my grandfather came to eat here, my father brought me here, uh, I brought my daughter here and I'd like to bring my grandkids if I ever have any to come here. So, you know, there's not many restaurants where you can say we had five generations. And if you said the Far East Cafe, let's go to the Far East, to any Japanese American anywhere in Southern California, they knew where it was, they knew what it was, they knew what the food was, and it just became famous. It became a, kind of a set, social center of the whole community. This is a marvelous example of a Episcopal church built in 1888. It is an example of, of the type of material and quality that was built at the time. It's still standing today, strong as ever. But just as significant, it's what happened in these walls, what happened in this place. It was a center of much political activity during the 1960s. Cesar Chavez actually stood on this altar, held a whole group of sessions to organize people when we had the great grape boycotts of the 60s. The significance of this building and buildings like this is that we are able to share this with our youngsters. Our youngsters are in a place where they are not aware of the value of these buildings. So we are able to share with them the history. That history is knowledge. And that knowledge allows them to understand you know, a stronger sense of, of identity, increases their self-esteem, and it raises their conscious level as to where they're at as a community. They have a reason to preserve it, to have pride in it. Historic preservation is about much more than just aesthetics, about beautiful old buildings that are worth preserving solely for their uh, beauty and architectural character. Historic preservation is also important because it's about our economic development. It's about um, revitalization in our communities. It's about using the history of our city as a, as a marketing tool to attract visitors and attract um, economic reinvestment. The older side of downtown, when you get into the historic core and even further east, um, those are areas of the city that have uh, stood in for virtually every city on the east coast, other countries. You know, Prestige would be a good example. It was a movie that was shot about two years ago downtown on Broadway. The entire movie took place in Victorian era London. Um, but because of some of the grand movie palaces there and some of the older buildings, it was able to fit right in as uh, turn of the century London. Um, but large parts of LA, particularly on the east side, the older brick buildings, they sit in for New York and Philadelphia and Chicago um, routinely. LA has uh, a little bit of everything, an interesting place to live, the architecture that's here. We've got some of the most modern, beautiful architecture and we have some of the fantastic old architecture that people don't immediately think LA has. But, um, so I think it's a, it, it's, it's a mix, it's the mix of the people and the buildings and the history here that make LA such an interesting place to be. Having these older buildings here, selfishly for, for Film LA and for the industry is a benefit because uh, it allows people to do some uh, filmmaking here that they might have to go elsewhere um, and do if we, if we don't keep and restore and you know, hang on to these uh, buildings. Having a historic survey will benefit us in, in two ways. One, it will provide us with knowledge whether it's a tourist who's coming to Los Angeles to see part of our history or whether it's somebody who's a fourth or fifth generation Angelino, uh, like myself, wanting to know more about his or her city. It will give us that knowledge, that roadmap, um, and a way to navigate LA um, and understand our past. But secondly, it will also help us preserve that past by flagging those assets that we have. Uh, when there's redevelopment or a proposed project going on, we will immediately know what the historical significance of buildings and streets and neighborhoods are. 
Right now, that has been somewhat of a guessing game, or it's been uh, uneven, and those who might have knowledge about a particular building come forward, but the city hasn't done that in a comprehensive way. So now we will have the tools to understand our entire city and its history. Survey LA is ultimately a planning tool, giving policymakers, community members, property owners and developers alike comprehensive information on Los Angeles' architectural, cultural, uh, historic and social history in a way that is um, manageable, is centralized, contained in one place, available to all on the web to guide our decisions um, as a city and guide private investment uh, as we move forward and constantly evolve uh, in, a, in an ever-changing Los Angeles.